Electric knives are trying to make a comeback, so Adam's here to tell us if we should let them. Well, Julia, these things kind of look a little more mid 20th <laughs> century than they do digital age, it's but true. they have been useful in the past and we were curious. So we have this lineup of four different electric knives. The price range was $19.92 to $122. Ooh, that's pricey. And they all work basically the same way. You have two blades that attach at the tip like so, and they get put into a handle that houses a motor like so. And then you turn it on and the blades move in opposite directions that creates a sawing motion so that you can cut through things without a lot of downward pressure. So it's great for baked goods that you don't want to squish or big roasts where you don't want to work too hard to get nice, neat, even slices. Our testers tried them on three different kinds of bread of different textures, whole loaves of Japanese milk bread, which you know <laughs> is super tender, whole loaves of hala, which is a little firmer, but still on the tender side, and then whole loaves of francese, which has a tough crust, it's sort of an artisan bread. They also used our favorite serrated knife, just for reference alongside to see what they thought. They used them also on rotisserie chickens <laughs> and on 20 pound roasted turkeys. Ooh. Again, with a manually operated, just regular chef's knife alongside for a point of reference. Now, all four of these knives actually had various problems with the bread. Some of them squished that really tender Japanese milk bread. Some of them slid off the crust of the Francese. By and large, testers really preferred just using a regular manual serrated knife, but it was not the case for poultry. Interesting. Poultry was really good. So Julia, why don't you try that white one down there okay. on this turkey breast there and just see what you think. All right. I kind of like it. I was ready to make fun of this thing, <laughs> but look how thin that goes. So your experience is mirroring the tester's experience. You know, one tester even said that carving a turkey with an electric knife made it feel effortless. <laughs> When's the last time you heard that about carving a turkey? I've never heard that. So, well, it is pretty maneuverable. So. Yeah. There are a couple of design features that came up in the testing. The first one was the handle. You can see that the bottom of this has these sort of hard edges, mm. these creases. Testers didn't like that. They preferred a nice rounded handle that was more comfortable to grip, gave them a more secure grip. And certainly if you're gonna use it to carve a whole big holiday roast, you're at it for a while. So you wanna have as comfortable a grip as you can. Makes sense. The position of the power button also came up. Some of these have a power button on the bottom. Mm -hmm. So you pull it up almost like a trigger using your index finger. Some of them, two of them have power buttons on top. Why don't you try that one, which has the power button on top. Cut a couple of slices with that. Oh, you gotta press forward and down. Forward and down. All right. I gotta say, this, it feels like a power tool. It feels like it should be in the garage. Yeah, okay, the truth comes out. I slid a head trimmer into the test. <laughs> yeah, kinda, that's what I thought of, especially with this handle. It's also kinda, kinda loud. <laughs> it's a little loud. <laughs> Oh, wow. I have no dexterity with this at all. It is just, it's like using a chainsaw so to cut a turkey. So testers really didn't like those top mounted buttons, especially on this model. <laughs> you know, if you're carving a big roast and you have to press that button yeah. down for a long time, Ooh. there were some thumb cramps yeah, in the well, crowd. Yeah, well, look, I already have a bump on my thumb from pressing so hard. Workman's comp, Julia. <laughs> Now you mentioned the noise. This thing was also pretty loud and testers measured the noise levels with a decibel meter. And this one was the loudest. It was 89 decibels. For Ooh. a frame of reference, a lawnmower is 90 decibels. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, regular conversations like the one we're having mm. now between two civilized people are about 60 decibels. Much less. Much less. Also, some of these things vibrated a little more, a little less, and testers didn't want too much vibration. They also came with certain features. Some of them had special blades for cutting meat or bread, mm. different storage systems. Mm. Testers tried all of those, but didn't really you know, care for any of those features. They wanted to keep it simple. The one feature that made a big difference was having a safety lock. That makes sense. That's usually just a little toggle right on the power switch right there. You can lock it in position so you can't press it by accident. One of these knives didn't have that. It was Ooh. this one. And testers worried that you know, they could grab it if they were working really quickly and turn it on by accident. Or if you're at home and you have kids running mm -hmm. through the kitchen and they get curious and oh, turn yeah. it on, that's an accident waiting to happen. In the end, that white one there, which is this one, was the winning 
electric knife. Yeah. This is the Black & Decker Comfort Grip 9-inch electric knife. It was the least expensive at $19.92. Like that. It had a great slicing ability. It was the quietest. It had the safety lock, a comfortable handle, and it's really good for, you know, a big holiday roast. All right. So there you have it. Electric knives do have their place around a holiday table. And our favorite is the Black & Decker Comfort Grip 9-inch electric knife at $19.92. Thanks for watching Cook's Country from America's Test Kitchen. So what'd you think? Leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or just say hi. Now you can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. Alligator. <laughs>